Here we have the Tandberg TCD310 all taken apart on the workbench. As we take a closer look at the unit itself, you can see it's quite a neat service friendly setup. Quite a unique setup and quite a clever setup as well. Now we have a switchboard with the microphone inputs and all the function switches as well as the control electronics for the mechanism right there. We have a plug-in circuit board right here which has some more switches and the auto stop electronics and we have two Dolby modules right there. And you do want to remove all these modules and spray them with contact spray because some of these contacts tend to go bad over the years. Of course, all the way at the bottom we have the main board. The whole cassette deck is built around the front panel and the back panel. These are extruded aluminum profiles. As you can see, quite a difficult shape. But this means that the whole deck, everything, it screws into these panels, it slides into these panels, it rests in these panels. As you can see behind it there, the power supply uses the panel as a heat sink. They, they're using it to uh, guide some of the cables. And this is quite an interesting design. Another interesting design is the mechanism. This is a three-motor dual capstan mechanism. And unlike your regular mechanisms, this uses one motor for the capstan. It uses the two other motors for each one of the, uh, of the reels, the take-up and supply reels. These are direct drive, unlike in a more conventional mechanism where there is one motor for both reels and then there is another motor to uh, lift the heads in place and all that. Uh, in this deck, that is done by a huge great big solenoid on the bottom. The advantage of having direct drive for the mechanism is the speed that you get in fast forward and rewind. Let's just do fast forward and take a look at how the tape moves. As you can see, this is fast. And thanks to a rather sophisticated setup, electronic setup that is, the motors are actually controlled in their speed. Rather than just feeding DC straight into these two motors, they are using them as part of a feedback loop. So one motor gets voltage, the other motor is used as a generator, and as you can see, the deck is able to slow down the speed whenever the tape reaches the end. So nothing goes fut when it's there and then it engages the auto stop which by the way does not disengage these switches you have to do that manually whenever i got the cassette deck it was absolutely filthy it was absolutely dirty and so first of all it needed a whole lot of cleaning then i took it all apart to see if there was anything inside that was obviously wrong i then powered it up and fast forward worked, rewind worked, but playback did not work at all. Using the service manual, I started taking measurements on the take up and supply motors, and I found out that those were getting the voltages they ought to get during playback, so I knew that something was uh, wrong with the solenoid or the electronics controlling the solenoid. The control electronics for the solenoid are, in fact, rather complicated because rather than just uh, you press the switch and the deck starts to play, they have a delay in there so that the motors have a chance to remove any slack that may be in the tape. If I press play, as you can see, that happens with a certain delay. And this delay circuit works using a bunch of transistors and two capacitors. One charges and the other one discharges. I took a look at the capacitors which are located on this switch assembly 
circuit board. And one of them was this one right here. The letters ROE in the square indicate that this is a Röderstein brand capacitor. And this is one of their capacitors in the red plastic container. And these always go bad. If you see one of them, just replace it. These are always bad. I'm going to prove it to you if we use the component tester right here. As you can see, this is supposed to be a 22 microfarad capacitor, but we only get about 10 microfarads and 140 ohms of equivalent series resistance. So that thing is toast. That's not going to discharge and it's not going to charge properly. And so I replaced it and this solenoid worked. But then the next problem showed up. The cassette deck would go into playback mode, but the auto stop would engage almost immediately. So that was the next problem and I spent several hours experimenting and uh, trying to trace down bad components on the uh, on this circuit board which has the electronics for the auto stop as well as the control for the real motors. And finally I decided okay I'm gonna give up on that I'll have to come back to it later and I'm first gonna take care of another problem in the service manual, it says when you had the mechanism disassembled, you got to make sure to pack the ball bearings in the mechanism with grease. So I knew there is grease in the mechanism and of course, where there is grease, after 40 years, there is trouble. What you have to do is uh, you have to take the mechanism all apart. And this is uh, rather unusual and uh, rather complicated. Basically, the first thing you have to do is remove the head assembly. On a more conventional mechanism, that is basically the very last thing you're ever going to do. But on this, you cannot even change the belts without removing the head assembly. Uh, there are two belts in this, thanks to the dri direct drive. There are only two. One is for the capstan, it's a flat belt, which was still good. The other one is uh, right there for the counter. That I had to replace. The ball bearings are located under the head assembly, and the grease that was in there, the original 40 years old grease, it was not just sticky. It was solid. I went ahead, I took the mechanism all apart, I tore it down all the way to the base plate and I started by lubricating the back bearings for the two capstans. I cleaned up the capstans themselves, I lubricated the front bearings, I put that back together. I then uh, removed, uh, using a lot of chemicals, I removed the grease, the old hard grease out of the ball bearings. There are three of them under this head assembly and I replaced the grease and that as you can see freed up the mechanism really really well and that also fixed the problem with a playback I guess what was happening is the sticky grease or the hard grease made the process of pulling the heads up onto the tape so slow that uh, the auto stop already said okay uh, I'm timing out because nothing is happening. So after I had that fixed, after I had the grease replaced, this is now uh, moving uh, nice and fast. And also the auto stop now works as it is supposed to. Right there. So I now have the deck pretty much fully repaired. It is starting to look like a cassette deck again, and I can now confirm also the record function works, except for the erase. The erase doesn't work all that well, some of the old recording remains, but aside from some scratchy level regulator sliders, everything else works perfectly fine.